Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got a four pound beef chuck, and I'm going to heavily season both sides with kosher salt and fresh ground black pepper. And you can either add this to a slow cooker or a casserole dish and cook it in the oven like I'm going to do. Now I'm going to add one small chopped onion to a blender, add several garlic cloves, some chipotle peppers and adobo sauce, apple cider vinegar, cumin, turmeric, ground cloves, and dried Mexican oregano. I'm also going to add a squeeze of fish sauce, but if you don't have this, you can add an anchovy or anchovy paste. Now here I've got my homemade fresh red enchilada sauce. It's very simple to make. I just de-seed red chilies and I add them to a pot. I cover them with broth and once I've cooked that down I put them in a blender with several different herbs and seasonings as well as some fresh garlic. And once this has all been blended together, you just want to add it to a strainer that you can just sift through all the bulk so you can end up with this nice smooth sauce. And I have a full detailed video on how to make this in the description below. But the important thing is to have this at the ready so you can just add this to our other ingredients for our barbacoa. Once you've blended all of these ingredients together, just cover the top of that beef chuck so it can marinate in this sauce for 24 hours. And on a side note here, it's a good idea to add some cheek meat or some oxtails if you want a gamier taste in your barbacoa. And once it's done marinating, you want to just take it straight to the oven and you want to bake it at 275 degrees for four hours. And when it's done, it should look something like this. As you can see, this beef chuck is completely smothered and drowned in flavor. I like to separate the meat in another bowl so I can fork it apart. And just look how tender that meat is. But don't think for one second we're done here. We're going to take a fresh lime here and squeeze that right over the top. And once you've squeezed in both halves, you want to take that juice that was left over in that casserole dish and pour it right over the top of all of our barbacoa. At this point all of the seasoning is complete minus your personal preference for salt and pepper. And you want to just do that to taste. But I like to use kosher salt and just a heads up I generally use quite a bit. And once you've got this all stirred in you're ready to serve. I like to serve this over two heated white corn tortillas. Then I hit it with some chopped green onion and some fresh chopped cilantro. Don't forget the lime. And there you have it. Barbacoa right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.